is that you have title to that bar. And that deed, that bullion deed, clearly describes the bar. And so you have a bullion deed that describes that you have title to a bar for each bar you have in the vault. That, that's certainly what BMG does, um, the firm I use for my clients. Because in that, that piece of paper, which they do on a unique piece of paper, each, each deed certificate is unique because it has itself a number, so each bar will only have one. Um, what is the pedigree that you need to see to confirm you have title? You need to see who produced the bar, the serial number, the exact fineness, and weight. And obviously, your name on it. <laughs> your name on that piece of paper as the, confirming you. And that paper should state that it, the title has been conferred from to you. Because you bought that bar from someone. Uh, excuse me. Would you consider this? Should this be a notarized piece of paper, like a like a land title? It's it's, it's, it's exactly like a real estate kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's as important as when you buy a house. You want yeah. Whether it should be notarized, it could be. It, yeah, it could be. But um, that I I haven't seen so far. That BMG, for instance, hasn't gone that far. But they've gone to the extent of even issuing unique certificate produced by a, a firm that produces share certificates in Canada, serialized, so that there's no two, there's, you, can, like, you cannot have two certificates for the same bar, it's just not possible. Um, so if you do it that way, that asset, the bar you bought, is yours, it's your asset, it's nobody else's liability. It's not the bank's, the, the, the custodian's liability, it's your asset. Whereas if you do it like most people do it, and you, 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 you open an account with a bullion bank or a provider of, of storage facilities for, for bullion, and they will accept any round figure you provide, uh, whether you have $10,000 to invest or a million or 150000 and they will give you a certificate that you have $150,000 worth of bullion or whatever it is that you've um, deposited, uh, you do not have bullion. You cannot buy bullion in round figures. It's not possible. The price fluctuates and it'll be at a certain weight whether you buy a coin, whether you buy a, a bar, a kilo bar or a 100 ounce bar or 400 ounce. Even, even 400 ounce bars on the London market vary from 380 to 420 ounces, and the fineness vary from 99.5 to 99.99. So, so what you end up buying can can vary significantly. Um, so if you if you open an account with someone that says you just bought bullion and you've given them a round figure and it's, they give you a receipt, you, you, what you've done in effect is you the same thing as opening an account in a bank. It's not your money anymore. You've lent it. You've lent it. The firm may well have bought or hold bullion at that point, but there's nothing stopping the firm from lending it out or from selling more certificates on it to other people. You are owed. You do not own. You are owed the gold. In effect, and even the LBMA uh, website, when they explain the difference between allocated and unallocated accounts, with their members, they have a sentence that says, you are an unsecured creditor. <laughs> I mean, probably 0.1% of the people who open such accounts know that or read it, but that's effectively what you are. And it has to be known that there is far, far more activity on the London market that's of the unallocated <coughs> type of account than allocated, because there's a lot of trade. So, the, it's not long-term holding as we, us people, tend to be. I think it's very important to understand that. So here, your assets, nobody's liability, so you don't have any counterparty risk. Here, 
the whole idea of buying bullion is to limit your credit or counterparty risk. Now you've just changed the party with which you have counterparty risk. Is that all clear? Just, just briefly, um, how many of you are familiar with the uh, futures market that China announced will be opening so soon? Yeah. Yeah. I was at the breakfast. Huh? I was at the breakfast. <laughs> yes, I know you were. <laughs> and, and at the GATA conference, there was a presentation that was um, about that. What's interesting about this, do you know if it, they're going to launch at, on, at the date they wanted, or is, that's being deferred slightly right now, right? Yeah. I think they intended to launch this quarter. I think now it's like almost mid-year next year, second, end of first or during the second quarter. But effectively, they're launching what they call the Pan-Asia Gold Exchange in Kunming. Kunming, which is... Um, an ancient uh, financial uh, center for China. Um, and basically the contract, a bit like on the COMEX, it's, but instead of a 100 ounce bar, it's a 10 ounce bar, and it's gonna be open to international, not just domestic. And one element of it that's interesting is that it's going to Increase the international aspect, you know, the beyond China's border um, trade in renminbis. Um, but the most fascinating aspect of it is at the top there is it's going each contract um, will be based on fully allocated title. Can you go back? Yes. Yeah. So some argue that this could change the price discovery mechanism for gold because the price of gold, what we call spot price, is largely determined in the futures market or the unallocated trading on the London market all that combined, not the actual physical movement of the metal, physical buy and sell, plays a very small part in determining the price, the spot price of the metal. So at the moment, most trade in the LBMA, that's where most of the trade takes place, it's, it's huge, it, it, it's a significant market, much bigger than on the um, COMEX. Um, is largely done on an unallocated account basis. This new contract that's going to come on board next year will offer a fully allocated bar for each contract. So time will tell, but I think it's, a, it's an interesting argument that is being made that you may have people who are, who are concerned about um, what's going on, that they may want to take delivery and they may, or they may want to trade on a market that has the metal. So time will tell, uh, but, but that is the, uh, the expectation. And where this becomes relevant is, this is a chart from, everyone familiar with share links? If you're not, use it, go there, subscribe, this, um, what's his name, Nick, Nick Laird. There's an abundance of fascinating charts he's putting together. Um, and, and this is one, I've, I've, had, I've added the red bit there and it's not completely up to date. That was when I spoke in, I think it was Hong Kong in September, or anyway. But it plots, <clears throat> uh, 
the total physical amount of gold that's known in, 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 in known repositories, so ETFs, funds, and so forth. Uh, the dark blue is the total number of ounces that, that is in those repositories, and the light blue is the price of those ounces in the known repositories. And what I find interesting is that you have this kind of action, which is partly explained by what Sandy explained yesterday, the leasing. Um, but there's got to be more to it than that, because here the total number of ounces has hardly changed, but during that time the price went from 1650 to 1900 to 17 to 1700. <laughs> so there's a lot of price movement in gold that has nothing to do with the amount of metal that moves. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? You know, I, I'm just observing that this is a metal. What we should all be interested in is, is bullion itself, yet the price of this material that is so important is not based on the physical demand and, and supply. The question is, will, will the Pan-Asia gold exchange have an impact? Maybe not stop this completely, but make sure that we don't have something relatively stable and the price going like this up and down, which would be nice. It might not be so nice for the people who trade on the futures exchange or, you know, in terms of volatility on the options market and so forth, but it seems to me it would be a more honest market. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, that, that account, uh, that um, thing you were talking about, the Asian, when you say it's allocated gold, that means no more open contracts than there are ounces in the vault. Is that... Is that the correct interpretation? That means that's right. That's right. The, 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 there, there will be in the vault of the exchange the, uh, the amount of 10 ounce bars as there will be contracts. Okay. But there's still leverage involved in margin, margin money and so on. But it's limited by the, by the actual physical amount of gold in the warehouse. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So that, does that mean it will not be possible to arbitrage? price difference between page and it wouldn't be possible to sell a page contract unless you had a bar there. So if page was more expensive than London or New York, you wouldn't be able to buy New York and sell page and then make delivery. It'd be interesting, eh? Because the, the idea is that they, they're planning to have an 8 a.m. Beijing fixed price, which is which would be nice to have a third, third fixed price in the day. And does, does anyone know who the the five uh, bullion banks are that fix the price every day in London? Bank of Scotia. Sir? Bank of Nova Scotia, Deutsche Bank, Barclays, HSBC. Um, yep. Morgan. No. Hmm? And Société Générale. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's actually Scotia Makata, which is yeah, the Bank of Nova Scotia subsidiary that's in the bullion business. Um, and the Rothschilds are not involved anymore. <laughs> um, so. Let's see what's the next slide. So, who owns the gold <laughs> is key in any of those options, uh, uh, alternative ways of, of investing, I don't like the word, but purchasing bullion or owning gold. And only true gold products 
that do not compromise on the fundamental attributes of bullion, um, in my opinion, should be considered in, in so far as your money outside the system. The, that part of your portfolio you want to allocate to protect your wealth. What are those three fundamental attributes of bullion? Anyone? Three fundamental attributes of bullion. It's a method of, um, you mean exchange and store of value? Yeah. Well, uh, from the point of view of uh, an asset to own. Uh, Readily accessible? Sorry? Readily Liquidity. Accessible? Re liquidity is the first. Purity. Very liquid. Purity. Oh, that's a given. Yeah. Um, liquidity. Um, bullion traded uh, 24 hours a day, um, all week long, and uh, it's very liquid um, in the wholesale market. No current to party risk, which is something that you completely lose if you have any security form of bullion. And my favorite, can anyone guess what it is? Physical. Yes, and, and what do you have to do to maintain its value? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so you have um, an asset that is independent of management skill. <laughs> now this is why, this is why bullion is hated. Mm -hmm. There's no question about this. This is why you won't hear anyone involved in delivering investment solutions to retail, wholesale, having any interest whatsoever in bullion. Because there's no skill, uh, there's nothing to manage. You buy the material and you forget about it. Really, really Warren Buffett's a prime example of that. I mean, oh, he disparages gold. He sees it's, it's a waste of time. You can, with all the gold, you can buy gold on American railways or whatever. Uh, whether he understands it or whether he just doesn't care. I, I can only assume Warren Buffett uh, must have been badly treated by his father. Yeah. <laughs> at some stage, you know, and, and psychologically he's taken that stance today because his father, uh, don't know how many of you know, was a congressman. Senator. Senator. Thank you. Okay. One or the other. He was a politician and a very strong advocate for the return to the gold standard. And um, I can just imagine the conversations around the dinner table. <laughs> yes, Philip. I was just going to make a quick comment that I saw an I read an interview with Earl Warren Buffett about his father, Howard Buffett, some years ago, and he was very disparaging of his father. There he was really personal. Right. And and that must color his opinion on bullion, of course. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said you had to do nothing to it. Well what's yeah. that abuse to Warren Buffett? That's right. His whole fortune has been made on management and managing mm -hmm. other people's things, taking the risk. Yes, and, and his, his well-known uh, quote that, you know, if a man from Mars came to Earth and saw us dig it from underground and then dig another hole to put it in a vault and say we're all nuts. Well, I mean, the same man from Mars would probably think we're nuts by chopping a tree that costs, what, a thousand dollars or whatever and then pulp it into paper and spread a bit of ink and create a trillion dollars of it, you know? <laughs> it's just as silly and ridiculous, uh, probably even more so. Um, so before I, we finish, because there's, uh, what? Value Did I say it never loses value? It's got a fixed value. What, what has a fi fixed value? Got a fixed value in gold, but not, but not relative to anything else. It has a fixed weight. Whatever you buy has a fixed weight. Value is definitely in the eye of the beholder. Yes. 
um, but the um, it, gold is a good measure of value. It's a good unit of measure, and this is why gold is money. It's not so much that gold itself has value, but it, 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 it value derives from its use as money. And yeah. Um, I just want to reiterate one um, important point about all this in terms of owning bullion is the concept of title. So it's very important that you ensure you have title to the bars you buy. Um, we'll stop there and, and there's more material but I'm happy to answer questions in the break. And um, that's me going away in the distance. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, it's the end of the week. <laughs> it's the end of the monetary system as we know it. Okay, thank you. Good morning to you, sir. Hmm? Afternoon. If some of you want to browse through on bullshit, <laughs>